Welcome back, Akron fans, to just these exhibition matches I'm casting, and we are going to be cast watching a match now on Rooftop Showdown. Once again, J Raccoon versus Crisp. So both players, J Raccoon now going for CISO. Crisp probably also going to be going for Vecure, but we'll see. I'm not sure how. Yes, he's going for Vecure. That appears to be his main raise, which is nice to see more Vecure players out there. You know, myself and Skanov. And otherwise, I'm really not sure. But it is nice to see more Vecure players coming up. And J Raccoon, like I said, going to see. So he is going for a very quick opening with the importer and 3 RPs. Probably will build a factory very soon after. Rooftop Showdown is very popular to build 3 RPs, importer, factory, and then a couple ATHCs and move from there to Mar Tanks. Given that he's moving his infantry forward quite a lot, I'm guessing he's going for proxy. Also going for the center expansion here, the lucrative center expansion. Which will be very important very soon. And he's definitely trying to expand there directly. So no, he's not going for an aggressive build. He's going for an aggressive expansion. Without any real, you know, meat to his aggression. While Crisp is going a bit more for economy, getting out his Shinvir and Tethvir for scouting, and Zyngir staying at home to continue building up economy. Also kind of nicely building up a little comm hub right over in the center of the map in case any proxies come up. Not a bad place to put it. We have seen proxies before around, well actually when CISO on this side, around the south side of the map, so if CISO is on the west side then proxies would probably be over here or over here, though if J Raccoon were to go for a really risky proxy, this comp hub would see it. Anyway, J Raccoon on the other hand not going for any of that, he is going for just center expansion, and has spotted that comm hub, so he will be able to take it out. Crisp, having seen it, well actually Crisp having already lost his tenth viewer in this particular case, Really all he has is that comm hub right now, and that was a lot of money to spend on the comm hub, and while I normally support comm hubs being built, I very much enjoy building them myself and seeing them be used. I don't think this is necessarily the best position for it, but I suppose he couldn't really have known that Jericho would go along the top and bottom. It's not actually... I've never actually seen a player do that myself. However, this is a really good idea, and really should be done. This is how the game should be played. Like, Rooftop Showdown really should explore both paths along the center, because... They're split pretty well, and if you don't explore both paths, you can easily lose something. And there is a proxy factory! Jericho, in fact, going for that proxy factory, just with a bit more of a solid economy behind it, using the center expansion. So not as fast as it could have otherwise been, but still very powerful. Probably four or five ATCs will be coming out of there once it gets built up. I actually would recommend building a second factory on top of this, just to spend what's there. And a Shinvir, however, in the way, we'll be able to scout out what's going on. So Crisp will know at least that there's a Marine going up there and it'd be a good risk for expansion, but no, that Shinvir moving out of the way will encounter the special op, but will not kill it, and no, the Shinvir will not spot the proxy, will only spot income inventory, and will not see anything too suspicious as Jericoon just deals direct damage, so this iteration, Jericoon being a much more aggressive player, get, excuse, actually, the comm hub not being built, Crisp completely undoing it this time, we see the resources have not been spent for it, so J Raccoon in Actually, a really good position right now. I do not see him falling apart too readily from here. I mean, Crisp, Crisp still has time. He still has time to build up. He's getting his depot up. St a late depot, mind you. He really should be building that depot around two minutes in or so. Not building as so many RPs, just focusing on getting an early foundation and depot. And I mean, actually, might, maybe in a minute and a half. You can do that, and against a proxy factory, I'd recommend it. Although Jericho's proxy factory is fairly late, so Chris may still have a chance. So from Jericho's point of view, he has this proxy factory up, he has two ATCs coming in. No further ones, bizarrely. But he is building up more expansions, just using that as a cover for further expansion attempts. Wow, this is this is interesting. I'm surprised I didn't see more of this in the tournament. Though I suppose at the time, all-in builds were really popular, so it wasn't certain if an aggressive, like, a military-covered expansion-based strategy could work. However, Crisp is building up his depot. He is setting himself up to try to counter this with his depot. And the factory, well, both are about half done from the looks of at that time. And, no, even with that, Crisp... This is bizarre. Where is Crisp propagating that depot from? Because he, he appears to have built a depot about five minutes from, or five seconds from now, and 
from there you should be able to defend decently well as the depot gets up in time, but it's not being built even though he has the money for it. He has, he has more than enough money for it. He needs to have built it a while ago, actually. And no, he's not building it. The timing that he had built it at, which was here, is no longer when he's building it, which means he has no depot. And I don't know why he has no depot. Why did he undo that construction? Why is he not building it? And there's that proxy macrofab I mentioned. That's the Mar tanks, but even now, Crisp has already lost if he is not building that depot. And like I said, he's taking a while to build that depot. And really, he just needs one RP on LC, one on QP, and that would do it. That'd be all he needs. He doesn't need to build four on LC for just building the depot like this for defense. And here, now he could build Zion Pulsers. He's not converting a Zion Viewer to Zion Pulsar. This is a big mistake. He needs to convert at least one of those to Zion Pulsar. And he's not doing that. This ATHC will be able to get in in time. Two Zion Pulsers would be enough to deal with the ATHCs. They'd have right timing too. This Zion Viewer needs to become a Zion Pulsar. And it is not, I do not know why. I don't know if he's not aware that you can pilot Veer into vehicles, but he is not doing that. And that, that just cost him a Zion Veer. The Zion Pulsar is fresh. You can tell from the build time. That Zion Beard not being used. So Zion Pulsar able to defeat the HHCs handily, but he could have saved that Zion Beard, and that was rather unfortunate. So this is Jay Raccoon building up to those expansions we saw before. It's the four minute mark. The expansions came up in the next three minutes from now. Further HHCs coming in from Jay Raccoon will be able to tear apart what Crisp has. Because I mean, Crisp has the Zion Pulsars, and those are okay, but. They seem to be kind of fluctuating in and out of existence, actually. Where is that Zion Pulsar? You had built some before. Probably just hasn't probably was around here and hasn't propagated up to this point yet, because he should have Zion Pulsars right now. And that much less money as well. Now ATTs are pretty good against Zion Pulsars if you have enough of them, but Zion Pulsars are a decent counter. Martanks will kill them though, and J Raccoon really all he's doing is trying to cover this expansion. And this expansion in the north center as well. I'm trying to cover the expansions with the ATHC. You just keep Crisp occupied and distracted while he builds up more and more cash flow. And then from there, he'll be able to build the Macrofab and then get those Mar tanks we saw before. Yo, the infantry covered though. These ATHCs are actually doing a great job getting rid of these Zion Pulsars. Zion Pulsar, however, one of them skipped teleport, able to get away and take out the ATHC, which distracted by the foundation, not able to deal with anything. J Raccoon. Still has his expansion covers. He has his macrofab being built up. And looks like he's trying to build up near Crisp's expansion, but that probably won't be the case. So Crisp is still in a tight spot, but not completely on the ropes yet. Building more... Oh, Teth Pulse is actually a bit paranoid about air units. Not the best move against CISO. CISO at this stage in this metagame will go for Mar Tanks next, so HHC's Two Mar tanks, that's how it goes. Teth Pulsars will not be able to deal with that especially well. Really, I'd recommend going for an aerial control center and just building up from there. Maybe Teth Turchers, definitely Shin Turchers, and using that to get up from there. But right now, J Raccoon is still in the lead, particularly from these expansions. He has quite a lot of money coming in. We'll be able to build up Macrofab and Mar tanks without any issue. And actually, getting. Wow, getting rid of both design Pulsars. I'm a bit surprised that Chris did not jump them back into the depot to heal them up. I think he's still working on that. He is remicroing that battle, so I expect he will be jumping them back in. No, he is not. He is... Oh, that one was right in the middle of researching teleportation. So unable to do anything with that. And no, not actually sending them into the depot. Why is he not sending them into the depot? That is the key to evac your defense, is put your vehicles back into the depot to heal them up. I mean, in the event that they get destroyed, yeah, you can rebuild them from infantry, but you can get a free healing in the amount of time it takes to build from infantry, which is a few seconds. Still able to get rid of the ATHCs, but at a great cost. Losing all of his vehicles and having to rebuild them again, it's... Like I said, you could just heal them up and kept them. Teth Pulsars are ready, however, but like I said, air units are not on the plate, on the table. They are going to be fighting Mar tanks, and Mar tanks will just tear him to shreds. So there's really not much Chris can do from here unless he goes back and fixes that up, but I think that battle is in the unplayable past. All in the unplayable past right here. That, it's too late for him to deal with that, unfortunately. However, he is aware of what's going on now. He has found the Mac Fab, he has found the Mac. However, the Mar tanks are being built. He can't do much about it, and I don't even know if he's noticing. He has noticed it, finally. But this Mac is 
still going to be pretty huge. It's getting in the way. The Martank able to get rid of the Zion Veer and Zion Veer trying to deal with one of the Marines should be able to take it out of the way to expand, but still not enough firepower to deal with the Martanks. The Martanks will just tear apart everything that he has, that Crisp has once J Raccoon gets in there. So J Raccoon, I do not see him losing this match. I really hate to be anticlimactic about it, but I do not see him losing this match unless Crisp decides suddenly to go for air units and really goes for air units hard, which he could. He has a Shin Veer. He could convert that into a Shin Turcher very quickly if he gets an aerial control center right now. But even then, J Raccoon has a ton of time that he has these Martanks up that he could just attack from. For Crisp, Crisp, however, taking the initiative, attacking the Martanks directly, losing one of his iron pulses in the process, and out of position to heal up from the depot, by the way, so he really needs to get a lot of forces to deal with this. It's going to cost him a lot. However, he does not appear to be afraid of paying that price, which I still contend to be his downfall. But regardless, he is going taking the initiative, and J Raccoon losing two of his Martanks, but able to take out all the Zion Pulsers in the meantime. Like I said, Martanks will just destroy Zion Pulsers. They do not, do not counter the Zion Pulsers, or do not get countered by Zion Pulsers. Though with distraction, he is able to actually take care of it because Jericoon had moved forward and Zion Tritcher, however, Zion Tritcher is definitely a much better answer to Martanks than Zion Pulsar is. And without ATCs to help detect, that is going to be a much harder group of units to deal with. So Crisp actually managing to turn this around somewhat. Jericoon rather in a tight spot now. His Macrofab will be going down quite quickly. And in fact, he will be able to get one Martank up and should be able to take out or help take out one of the Zion Pulsar or Zion. Yeah, Pulsar, not the Churcher. And, no, J Raccoon actually jumping back, and this is the battle we just missed, where J Raccoon lost his Martanks, but he's moving away, not getting into that fight. Good idea, because really, the problem was that these infantry were getting in the way and distracting the Martanks while the Zion Pulsars could attack from a distance. That means, basically, that... The Martanks will now, in this particular attack, if they go for it, will, will take care of the Zion Pulsars, and that will eliminate their main source of taking damage. So Crisp going for the initiative, the Martanks will be able to defend, and will be able to defend effectively, taking out the Teth Pulsar in a hurry, but taking out one of the Zion Pulsars as well, and two of the Zion Pulsars, could be three, but we jump back a bit. J Raccoon's still not commenting an attack, but that's fine, he has an advantage of position, he just needs to really get him... All he needs to do is secure the military advantage, and then that'll be game. Getting two Macrofabs building up Martanks, great idea, by the way. I always advocate that players should be building more than one production structure of any kind for CISO. So, Jericho and multiple Macrofabs will be able to just completely out overtake Crisp in armoring production, as long as Crisp, Crisp does not start building air units, and no, Crisp is not apparently doing it. He has, however, found the expansion to the south, not the main expansion, though the main expansion was to the north, but the south expansion is still important. Actually, that was the main QP source, so Jericoon will be running out of Q Plasma fairly soon. But that shouldn't be a huge problem. Jericoon, however, is attacking directly right at the Unbelievable Pass to Edge, and will tear apart everything that Crisp has. Crisp did not set himself up to deal with this. And losing the foundation that could have become an aerial control center. Crisp has... is in a terrible spot right now. Crisp, however, half a second down from here, not building another foundation. Not setting himself up, definitely not putting his vehicles back in the depot to heal up, but not setting himself up for air units, which is what he needed to do a long time ago, like five minutes ago, is set up for air units. And once he's on the Macrofab, at the very, very latest. And I'm really surprised he did not do that. He's losing the depot, and that's going to be the game. So, once again, building air units is, in this case, a good idea. Design Torture does its job decently well, and more of those could have helped, because ATCs are not coming to detect, but with detection, Design Torture's don't fare very well either. And, like I mentioned, with detection, there is the detection right there. Design Torture is going down in a hurry. So, against Martanx, air units are definitely a good option. Air units or numbers are, are a good option, and Crisp had neither and could have built both, which is unfortunate to see. But that is how it goes down. So that is the game. J Raccoon basically has one. It's a matter of Crisp surrendering at this point. And Crisp did manage to take care of this Q Plasma RPs, which is not bad, but not enough. Really too little too late. Not dealing with the fact that he was distracted before. And he is trying to set himself up in a new position, set himself up in the southeast as an expansion there, but that really won't be enough. 
And there we go, that's that's it. Crisp lost his annex. There's nothing really that can be done. And a Blackbird and Frigate just coming up just in case. Just in the event that area has come up with a Blackbird more so as healing. And that's game. So there we go. Crisp GG'd. And that was certainly interesting to see. Once again, Crisp, newer player, how he deals with CISO. So main advice for that one is don't be afraid to go for air. I know I don't like air being the only thing used in the game, but air has its place, and countering Mars is one of those places. So air, definitely useful in that stage in the game for Vector versus CISO. And probably could have scattered a little bit more, probably could have just expected the fact that Jirakun would have gone for this early attack and just gone for an earlier depot himself. I'm impressed he managed to push off the initial ATHCs, but still, it's not a great position. So anyway, that is the second game of the day. I'll be casting another one, and then we'll see from there. Probably will be the last game I'll cast today. So stay tuned, everybody.